Hey there and welcome back to Sims Sunday. My name is Pete and as usual this is the series where we try to complete The Sims 3. By the time you watch this I will be on holiday, so I had to pre-record and that's also the reason why the episode is a bit short. Nonetheless, we're doing one full day in Sunset Valley and then also some building in the end. And we start a lovely Sunday in Sunset Valley with a well-rested Patrick, whose first task of the day is to take care of his garden. In the last episode we leveled up his gardening skill and he is now able to weed his plants, which means the whole thing should take a while. Then up next is Ahisha. She wakes up with the wish to find the rock and well, who are we kidding, we're going to do that anyway. So let's promise her that and have her grab breakfast. A short while later, Paul is also awake and has made the bed, and he will now quickly hop under the shower. Alright, Patrick is done in the garden, and he does have the wish to become best friends with Ahisha. Also, his social bar is a bit low, so I think let's have some friendly interactions between the two and improve their relationship. While Ahisha and Patrick are still talking, Paul passes by to grab breakfast, And while they're still talking, Paul cleans up his breakfast and then continues to paint Ayesha's portrait. And then finally we get the wish fulfilled, Ayesha and Patrick are now best friends and Patrick receives 750 lifetime happiness points. With his social bar filled, the wish completed and the day still young, Patrick can now hop on the shower while Ayesha raises her fun bar with some computer games. A few moments later, Patrick is squeaky clean and will now prepare breakfast for himself. Generally, I don't want him to eat leftovers from the fridge and instead take every opportunity we can to raise his cooking skill. In the meantime, Ahisha's fun bar has reached a solid level and so she can now use the teleporter, beam herself right next to the first rock and begin collecting. That also fulfills a wish for her. Lovely. Patrick will have his self-prepared autumn salad for breakfast. I also believe that's his favorite meal. While he's eating, we receive roughly two and a half thousand simoleons. That's the royalties for Paul. Then Patrick can quickly clean up. Clean the kitchen counter as well. And also use the teleporter to get himself to the library. Here he will now continue to improve his cooking skill. As the only person left in the house, Paul finishes the portrait of Ahisha and that is even worse than the previous one. Looks like we will have to do that one more time. We can sell this one and then have him also use the teleporter. And he also ends up in the library, where he will now take a seat next to Patrick and read up on the charisma skill. Once we reach level 5 in the journalism career, that skill comes into play, so let's get Paul a nice head start. <laughs> then we also get an opportunity for Ahisha, work as a bouncer at the theater to earn some money. Let's take that, because apart from collecting and working from home, we really don't have much to do with her, and that is a nice way to kill some time and make some money. <laughs> With Ayesha collecting and both of her boys in the library, not much is happening. So let's skip ahead to level 1 of the charisma skill for Paul. We won't stop there though and have him continue to read for the moment. Then while we watch Ayesha run towards her next gem, we can see Paul has already made it to level 2. But still, no end in sight. Ayesha has finished her collecting round for the afternoon and will now head over to the theater to work as a bouncer. Both Paul and Patrick have not improved their skills yet, but we can do something for Ahisha, and that is to pick the Bookshop Bargainer lifetime reward. In the long run, we of course don't want all of us sims to head over to the library to improve skills, so in a few seconds we will buy some books for ourselves. First though, Ahisha finishes the opportunity, we get 500 simoleons for that. Not much, but it will help cover our expenses in a few moments. While Ahisha makes her way over to the bookstore, we can switch back to Paul and Patrick, cancel both of their skill learning sessions and send them back home. Then, just as Ahisha is about to enter the bookstore, Death has other plans. Not with her, but with someone in her close vicinity, and of course, she has to run over and watch. Well, I see that differently, we hardly knew the guy, so please Ayesha, get a move on. Oh. 
Alright, our shopping list comes out at about 19,000 simoleons. Roughly half of that is caused by the ambrosia recipe. But we do have money to spare and tomorrow we collect more. So let's buy every recipe and every skill book available and then send a Yisha on another round of collecting. Both Paul and Patrick have made it back home and with Paul we want to go for the promotion tomorrow, that means a full day of working hard. So let's raise his fun bar in advance with some computer games. Patrick can continue to focus on his cooking skill and prepare a few rounds of stew surprise. That is the highest quality meal he currently has available and will therefore increase his cooking skill the most. Wonderful, one meal done, we can put that in the fridge and then have him go for another round. Alright, and that is a maxed out fun bar for Paul. That means he will now shut down the computer, no more games for him. And that is perfect timing, because at the same moment Patrick finishes another round of Stu Surprise. And because Paul needs some social interaction, he can now chat to his younger brother. In the meantime, Ahisha has made it home from another round of collecting. She will now send a few gems away to be cut and metals away to be smelted. And while she does, we get the info that simply by talking to his brother, Paul has improved his charisma skill to level 3. That is absolutely wonderful and means we can stop the interactions between the two now and send both of them off to bed. And just a few seconds later, Ahisha can join and we can make the cut for now, at least in the gameplay part of this episode, because now we will do some building. First of all, we can turn daylight back on and then place a few columns in the lower right corner of the lot. Those are the same columns that we already have in front of our main building. Up next, we can place a 5x8 building right behind the last pair of columns and then extend the pathway from the house to our newly built structure. We will also use this set of floor tiles to cover the entire area with the columns and also the inside of the room we just placed. Then, instead of a door, let's place an archway here and use Creator Style to make that look a bit better. Let's also flip it around so this side faces out to the front. Then we can just use the wall covering from our main building and apply that here. However, in contrast to our main home, we will do that both outside and inside. Time to build a roof next, first a flat roof to give the building a nice ceiling and then a gable roof on top of that. Very nice. That is the base already taken care of, we can now move on to decoration and we will begin with some flowers between the columns. Then to illuminate the entrance, some candles on the left and right of the archway, both of them slightly modified in creator style. And when we turn night mode on, that does look lovely. Up next, some more lights. This time, however, we will use fire, some torches in front of the first two columns, and then a few more on the ground inside. I think by now you should be able to guess what this is going to be. If not, then maybe this next step will help you. We will place a table here at the end of the room. However, we will use Creator Style to change its texture from wood to stone. And then we will jump over to Pete's grave, grab the tombstone, drag it over here and inside of this room it will turn into an urn and we can place that in the middle of the table. We can also grab Pete's portrait from the main home and place it above the table. Well, that is taking shape now, isn't it? We can quickly add a carpet to give the room a bit more flair. and then add some small plants next to the urn. A blast, two candles on the left and right and with that we're done. We have now successfully built a small family crypt, a place to honor those who have passed. This will now be the final resting place for Pete, at least until I decide to do the Oh My Ghost opportunity. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.